Hey everyone, it's Cole from A Plus Power Sports. I get a lot of people asking how I set up my sled for the year, and you guys don't need to copy this by any means, but this is just my opinion of what I think is a necessities and exactly what I'm doing to my suspension before I leave for the trails. Okay, the first thing that a lot of people point out and notice is I actually ride with a tall windshield. So it's super cold in northern Wisconsin, especially on the early season rides. Um, I have an open face helmet, which lets a little bit more air in than normal, but I hate being cold, especially on my face. So to stay warm, the tall windshield, that's always what I'm riding with. When it gets later in the season, I'll pop it off and switch it down to one of the lows or the mid windshields if I need to. Or if we do ride off trail, um, I'll take the windshield off completely and just run the front visor here. Another question I get from a lot of people is my front suspension setup and what carbides I'm running. So the factory Polaris carbides are coming from Woody's and most of them most of them are just a four inch uh, single runner, which that's fine, but I haven't had good luck with them lasting in the longevity section of it. So I totally just opt out, take them off right from the factory and throw on my favorite set of carbides, which is gonna be the Snow Studs um, eight inch single runner. I've had really good luck with the Snow Studs. I have more videos on a YouTube channel about them if you wanna look a little bit more in depth to those. But eight inch single runners is what I run, but there's tons of options if you guys want to know more and what sled and carbides you should be running, just leave a comment in the section below. But our front suspension, that's kind of difficult on some of the sleds. If you're not used to having clicker shocks or what to do or how it feels, I have another video on that that all I talk about is setting up your suspension. But I start out with just factory settings. Now, I'm not a very big guy, so factory settings are usually pretty uh, standard for me. Um, but I start with that, I kind of break in the shock with the factory setting, get used to how the sled handles and corners with that shock setup on there. And then after the first um, break in period or first couple tanks of fuel, I'll actually start to fine tune my suspension. With the Fox QS3s, they make it super simple. You have soft, medium, and hard. So if you don't like one, just switch it over. But the biggest thing I can't stress enough is do not turn this one to one and on the right side and then keep your left side on three. It's gonna corner. Um, very bad and if that's happening make sure that your clickers are the same. So very easy to tell on a Fox QS3 what click you're actually on but when we get into the Walker Evans and the VR1 shocks they have a lot more clicks to them and they don't have numbers on them so the best way to do that is turn it all the way to soft and count your clicks as you're going back. Set them back equal on each side but don't get them off centered to each other. Looking at the driver's seat on the sled here, um, I have a tether cord, so when I do go off trail riding, I can clip this to myself and I don't have to worry about falling off and having the sled take off away from me. And it's a good idea to just use it on the trail all the time. Our RCA plug right here, so when I do wear a heated shield helmet or if someone else rides my sled that has a heated shield, they can easily just plug in and they're not gonna fog up on the sled. This is a Switchback XC850, so we have the taller bar riser on it and everyone rides differently. So when they come from the factory, there is a factory setting that the setup guys are setting their bars to, so those should be pretty uniform across the sleds coming out of A-plus Power Sports. I ride a little bit different, so I stand up a lot more than um, some people do, so we'll put the bars more straight up and down. And you guys can adjust that. So when you get them back from the from us and you don't like the way your bars are set, it's very easy. There's four um, little screws on the bottom there and you can adjust and fine tune exactly where you wanna put your bars. Um, same goes for this. Some people wanna ride with their hooks out a little bit more or backwards. It's totally up to you, but to do that, you loosen up the four screws on the top and you can actually twist your handlebars. There are alignment marks on there, so don't get it off-centered to one side, otherwise it's gonna feel really weird when you're driving straight. I have the Ride Command 7S on this sled, so I'm always leading. I wanna make sure that I know where I'm going and have my maps routed out. Um, so before you guys hit the trails, make sure that you log into your Ride Command account, link your phone to it, get your Bluetooth set up, um, so you're not messing around with it, wasting time when you actually do get up north to ride. Do that in the garage. Once you turn the key on, you'll have power and you can quickly go through. If you want more info on how to set up and the different features on your Ride Command screen, we have another YouTube video um, on our channel that you guys can watch. Okay, looking at the rear tunnel on my sled, I always have the low profile storage tunnel bag on here. So there are tons of different options Polaris offers. Um, there's even a big adventure bag that sits up about this high that has a removable liner in it that zips up. So if you have tons of clothing you need to put in there for a big backpack trip, and that's what you're doing all the time, definitely recommend the adventure bag. Otherwise, this is what I start with. It's pretty sleek, looks nice on the back of the sled, but holds a ton of gear inside of it. So toe strap, different tools, 
wrenches, things like that, all can be uh, thrown on the back of the sled, and they're always handy. You just never know what's gonna happen on the trails. Polaris does a great job with all their accessories, but my favorite is the lock and ride. So removing the rear tunnel bag, you just lift up and it comes off. So if I need to go inside um, with my storage bag, it has a grab handle and I can easily just walk away with it. Um, take it off at night if you're staying at hotels, obviously, you saw how easy they are to take off. With the new Matrix chassis out, you do have storage right from the factory, which a lot of sled brands don't have and a lot of sleds haven't had in years. Um, so people always ask, do I really need a storage bag? Yes, you do. You're gonna fill it up very quickly um, if you're riding with the essentials. But under seat storage, it is nice to have, but I've already packed it full of um, just different safety gear, medical kits, different things like that. But quickly and easily pick up the seat, take that off to get to your storage and it'll lock back in. Um, up in the front, you also have a storage box up behind the screens. So it's actually pretty big. Um, you can fit quite a few um, gloves, hats, whatever you need to in there. But for me, it's never enough to have too much storage. So I highly recommend having a storage bag on your sled. Setting up my rear suspension on my sled, just like the front shocks, I'm leaving them stock for the first couple tanks of fuel. I really want them to work their way in, get all the seals and all the fluid moving through the suspension before I just start fine tuning. Now everyone can do whatever they would like, it's their sled, but this is just what I do. When I do get time to, or when it is time to adjust my suspension, I'm gonna do a lot with my rear torsion spring here. So it's set on the middle setting. You can go to low, which is on each side. The high setting's on the bottom. That's gonna fine tune just the ride and comfort of our sled. Now our front track shock, still three clicks, just like the Fox QS3s in the front. I'm gonna leave that where it is right now, but that's gonna fine tune kind of the pitch of the sled. So you can play with the shocks. I highly recommend everyone, once you are comfortable and used to your sled, don't be afraid to play with the shocks. You really can't hurt them. Um, I don't suggest touching your spring rate or like preload to it. Just leave it kind of at factory settings and see what you can get out of it with your clickers on the shocks here. The biggest must have every snowmobile rider should have at the bare minimum is a spare set of spark plugs and a spare drive belt. Just in case something happened out on the trails, it would kind of really suck to be stuck out there if you didn't have the right tools and gear to change and get back home to the cabin. So every sled leaving A plus power sports, highly recommending you have a set of spare plugs and a spare drive belt. If you guys like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to see what I have in stock right now, check out aplusride.com. If you guys have questions on this sled or how I set it up, I'll leave a comment in the section below. And as always, thanks for watching.